All right, I want to give you something very encouraging that I want you to share around the world because if we can set brush fires of freedom in the minds of men and get people motivated to fight for their freedoms, we can literally change the world overnight. But I want to start with something very unencouraging. But if people knew about this, if people knew that there were monsters that existed among us that want to do us harm, that literally want to eliminate our lives, then we can go out into the world armed with knowledge. This is from a 1974 National Security Council memorandum by Henry Kissinger. Quote, depopulation should be the highest priority of U.S. foreign policy towards the third world. And by the way, guys, with this economic chaos and economic terrorism that's happening right now in the name of protecting everybody from CV-19, they are literally trying to third world eyes, if you want to put it like that, America. They want to make us into a third world country. And you can see that with each passing day as people lose their jobs, they lose their homes, they're losing their businesses, they're losing everything. They're even losing their minds, and this is planned. I'm going to just stick around. I'm going to show you this. But first, let's look at something very, very encouraging. And more Americans are protesting stay-at-home orders. And now, even some business owners are defying the government, promising to reopen as early as today. Here's that is exactly what we want. The spirit of, of liberty is rooted in the spirit of non-compliance and rebellion and resistance. ABC's Kimberly Brooks with those details. This morning, workers across the country pushing back. We want to go back to work. We need to get this going again. It's time. I'm a free American and we need to start freaking acting like it. That I totally agree with that. We are supposed to be Americans. We are supposed to be free. We're human beings. Forget about just being Americans. We're human beings and we're going to fight for our freedom, I hope. So that when we gain our freedom, we can fight for the freedoms of other humans on this planet be, who are being severely oppressed. Yeah, we need to freaking start acting like it. From Texas to Virginia, protests erupting as states extend stay-at-home orders. Now, now, here's my contention. When you get together with these rallies, it's awesome to get together, guys. But to face a state house or a Capitol building and ask tyrants to please release us from the chains that you've imposed on us, it doesn't work. Turn around, face your people, and do what these people, you're about to hear these people are about to do. This is the plan for America. The plan for America by Americans is I don't give a damn who you are. You don't step on my freedoms. You don't step on the freedoms of my neighbor. You don't step on the freedoms and lives because that's what it is. If somebody's stepping on your freedoms, they're stepping on your life, your right to live, your family's right to live, your neighbor's right to live. In Minnesota, people taking to the streets, in cars, and on foot, toting signs like, you can't quarantine the Constitution, and all jobs are essential. Absolutely right. Think about that. Think about how pompous you have to be to sit there as a government official and say, well, my job as a congressman or a senator or a politician is essential, but your job as a barbershop owner or, uh, you know, maybe you own Bob. I keep bringing up Bob's barbecue or whatever. Maybe you own a sporting goods store. Maybe you own a game shop. It's essential to you because that's what's putting food on your table. If you didn't have that business, if you didn't have that shop, that barber shop or that Bob's barbecue, you couldn't feed your family. It seems like it's sort of essential to be able to eat so that you can live. So for somebody to come around and say, well, we're essential, but you're not is something that is completely antithetical to any semblance of liberty. And in Michigan, local law enforcement is now joining the resistance, with at least four sheriff's departments saying they will no longer enforce the governor's stay-at-home order. And, and before we read what this one sheriff says, guys, that's what we need. We, we're reaching out to you law enforcers and you military men. Please come back into your humanity. Don't enforce these laws and rules and regulations that are putting people out to the brink of poverty. And poverty is going to lead to way more death than this so-called CV-19 pandemic ever thought about doing. 
Poverty is going to lead to more death, more mayhem, more chaos, more destruction, higher crime, higher suicide rates, higher depression rates. And it's going to lead us into a third world scenario that we do not want. So I ask you law enforcers to please think about this. Don't enforce unconstitutional laws. Don't violate a person's right to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects in businesses. If somebody opens their business and other people want to come in and do business with that business owner, that shop owner, don't step on somebody's freedom. Please, for the, for, for the sake of all that is good. Please obey your oath. You took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You did not take an oath to become the very domestic enemy that you said you would protect us all from. Listen to this. This is this is so encouraging. Writing, while we understand her desire to protect the public, we question some restrictions that she has imposed as overstepping her executive authority. Yeah, but take, take that one step further, law enforcers. Say, we will not enforce an unconstitutional law. We will not violate our oath. If we see somebody surfing out in the water, we're going to let them surf. If we see them walking or sitting on a beach, reading a book, we're not going to enforce those laws. If people don't want to practice social distancing and they want to live as free men and women, we are not going to enforce any law. If we don't see somebody harming or threatening to harm another person or stealing somebody's stuff, we're not going to act. And take it one step further, because I understand what they're saying about the CV-19 thing. They're saying you are harming or threatening or harm another person if you don't practice social distancing. Guys, Let's get our heads out of the sand. It's all a lie. Nobody does that for AIDS. They didn't do it for SARS. They didn't do it for MERS. They didn't do it for Ebola. They're not, they, they're not practicing it right now on this planet with TB. Remember, let me just remind you, over 10 million people get infected with tuberculosis every single year. Guess how many people die? 1.5 million out of those 10 million. That's a 15% mortality rate, and nobody's telling you to social distance for that. And that is way more virulent, way more infectious, and exponentially more deadly than any CV-19. Even if CV-19 was that deadly, you still want dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery any day because peaceful slavery leads to more death than dangerous freedom ever could. Meanwhile, some store owners say they plan to get back to business no matter what. I'm fully aware of the risks that I'm taking. In Alabama, this barbershop owner is opening his doors, saying his livelihood depends on it. I've thought it through completely. Not okay, this guy's name is Scott Farr. Barbershop owner, I'm going to try to get all the information I can. We need to stand behind guys like this. He's going to put it all on the line for liberty, for his family. He's declaring his business as essential, just as all businesses are essential, because they essentially provide essential goods and services that your family needs to live. We need to get behind Scott Farr. I'm going to, if I find the information, I'm going to put it in the in a link in the description below and in the pinned comment. And this right here, his attitude of a mindset of liberty over tyranny is something that should be applauded and something that every single one of us, not only in America, but in the world, should stand behind. In this lightly. And in Ohio, the owner of a racetrack says he's reopening now. I didn't plan for a pandemic. I, I never... I never put money away for the rainy day. We are opening. Even though Ohio's governor says the state will slowly begin reopening on May 1st. Screw slowly opening. It's got to happen now. It should close down lockdown should have never happened in the first place. And and when we get our freedoms back on this, not demand our freedoms back, when we take it back, we can never go back from here, guys. Matter of fact, we need to take more and more of our freedoms and push for, further. See, when, when people fear governments, there's tyranny. But when governments fear the people, there's liberty. So it's not about, oh yeah, we'll wait for a couple days in the future until you say we can go back. It's about going back right now and taking our rights. Summit Motorsports Park is, is not going to wait um, for 
uh, Dr. Fauci and and wait for Amy Acton and good wait- good for this guy. This is Summit Motorsports. I'm going to try to find the information on this guy too, so we can rally behind him. And then when we rally behind him, we rally behind everybody and we support everybody. Your community is dying just like my community is dying. What's the remedy? We open up. We don't beg overlords to please open us back up. We open up. And we, and again, I just ask you law enforcers, you know, practice, if I have to beg, I'll beg. Do not close these businesses down. Do not give them citations. Do not kidnap them and take them to jail. They are free individuals doing free things. And if people don't want to do business with them because they're scared about this CV-19, which they shouldn't be because it's all a big fat lie, according to Anthony Fauci, YouTube, don't take my channel down because I said it's a big fat lie. Anthony Fauci said it was a big fat lie in the New England Journal of Medicine on March 26. He said it's not even as virulent as the influenza and has a mortality rate of 0.1%. That's the same as the flu. Nobody shuts down for the flu. So according to Anthony Fauci, we shouldn't even be shutting down for CV-19, even though he speaks in hypocrisy on that. For Mike DeWine, um, because none of them even know I exist and none of them really care. Guys, and now... That's true. Your governor doesn't know you exist. And as great of a guy or gal you as you think they are, they don't care about you. They can they care about power and money and control and prestige. They don't care about your business. They're the ones who have facilitated the tyranny that's making you go out of business. And we can't let that happen. One Ohio business owner is actually suing the state's health department, claiming businesses were never given a way to challenge whether or not they were essential and allowed to stay open. Kenneth, Mona. Thank you. All right. So I want to I want to encourage all law enforcers. Please don't let this right here. What we're about to see be you. See the Greenville on a church property. They got more police here than they doing on the corner of Nelson Street. I'm a pastor of a local New Testament church. Look at all the police cars. They heard through the grapevine we're having service at 6.30. I'm a good citizen. Ain't breaking no law, ain't selling no drugs. I'm just preaching the word of God. And look at all these police cars here. Yes, sir. I want you to listen to what these law enforcers say. Yes, sir. We're going to get tickets. Yes, sir. Yes. If you act like free, this, this cop is saying, if you act like a free man, we're going to give you a citation. In other words, we're going to steal your money. We're going to threaten you with force and violence if you don't pay that fine. If you don't pay the fine, we're going to throw your ass into jail and we're going to take 100% of your freedoms. Why? What's, what's the infraction officer? Oh, you acted, I, I'm acting like a free man. This guy's basically saying, if you act in accordance with freedom, you will be punished by the law. Good morning. Yes, sir. And we'll allow the, if you do have members come, we will allow them to leave before they're cited. Yes, sir. If they decide not to is when they will be decided. (laughs) Allow. I can't stand when a government functionary uses the word allow as though they're the parents and we're the children. That's not how freedom works. Free men don't ask for permission from other men for anything. Why? Because they're free. They don't need permission from other men to be free. Yes, sir. Uh, an order from the government. Yeah. Your, your rights are suspended. No. There's an order from the government. Your rights are suspended. Please, law enforcement, if you're a member of the sheriff's department, the regular police department, military, don't let this be your mindset. Resist this. I don't care what the threat is. I don't care if there's a foreign invader coming on American soil. You don't suspend individual rights. You know this. This is the oath you took. No pandemic can erase individual rights, period. No, our right don't come from authority. It comes from the Bible. So the authority does not have the right over the the Constitution. We're talking about the Constitutional law, the First, Second Amendment. Mayor Eric Simmons can't take it away, nor the police officer. It can't. No, it can't. So, y'all, this is how it can't. 
Nothing can suspend individual rights. As soon as you suspend individual rights, nothing will follow but massive death and chaos and mayhem and blood in the streets. That's how it works, guys. When governments take away rights, massive deaths begin to ensue. Happening in, in Greenville, Mississippi, the poorest part of the United States of America, more killing Greenville, more drugs on the corner, and look where the police officer's at. If y'all would have told me this, that I would experience as a pastor trying to preach the gospel, I wouldn't believe y'all. If y'all don't wake up, America, the police told me our freedom can be revoked. He said he don't care what the Constitution say. He don't care about the First and Second Amendment. I'm talking, when you say you don't care about what the Constitution say, you are violating the, the law of the land yourself. When you say you don't care about the, what the Constitution says, in other words, you don't care about what individual rights are, you're basically saying, I love death. Because when you take away rights, you're welcoming death and destruction. Please share this video with everybody you know. Please let it spread by, like wildfire. The way we take our country back and the way we take our freedoms back is not by asking for permission, but by living as free men and women and by sticking together when we've made that decision and stand behind each other because guys, we're gonna have to stick together. We need each other. We need to become united and get rid of all this division that we have among us. If you guys enjoy these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give them a thumbs up, share them with everybody you know, and don't forget to subscribe to my private email list through my website site, highimpactflix.com. Remember, when injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. For the first time in my life, I'm going to the store and seeing empty shelves. It started with toilet paper, then disinfectants. Now I'm seeing empty egg shelves, and it's difficult to go on a day when they have chicken, beef, or even rice in stock. And if people were fighting over butt wipes, imagine what's going to happen when people start starving. Let's face it, panic is the natural reaction for people who are unprepared. If you are prepared, there's no need to panic. Panic breeds chaos, especially where groups are concerned. And if it's one thing we've learned, you never want to underestimate the power of stupid people in large crowds. Chance favors the prepared mind. So guys, if you don't have enough nutritious, storable food and you need to be more prepared in case things get worse, go to preparewithhighimpactflix.com and grab your four-week emergency food supply. Because of the massive demand, they're shipping on a first-come, first-served basis. The orders can be delayed 8 to 12 weeks, but believe me guys, it's worth the wait. This food is nutritious, delicious, it's 2,000 calories per day for 30 days, there are 12 food varieties with up to a 25-year shelf life, and you'll save 100 bucks by ordering today at preparewithhighimpactflix.com. And because of the high demand, there's a limit of 3 per household. Your link is in the description and in the pinned comment. Remember, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it.